Spectrum 237, and I'm back with another uh, Jalo review. And this time it's 1971's Seven Murders for Scotland Yard. Now, this is one I've wanted to see ever since I first heard about Jalo, probably t about 12 years ago, uh, when I first looked up. Probably after the first time I saw Torso and Opera, I really knew what a Jalo was. And was looking up collection videos and, you know, kind of collecting titles to get. This was one that always stuck out to me. It just, it has a great ring to it. Seven Murders for Scotland Yard. Also known as Jack the Ripper of London, which was its original Italian, or Spanish title, excuse me. Which, before I go any further, I do want to once again touch upon... I know I've said before, and there's m many sources that say, to, no, number one, to be a giallo, it has to be Italian, or at least an Italian co-production. And I do firmly believe that, but for whatever reason, Spain has always gotten the pass for being giallo. I mean, even in a couple of the Forgotten Jally box sets, I think one or two of those are just sp Spanish, no like Trauma, Killers 1 of 13. There's no real Italian ties other than maybe a couple Italian actors or crew members. Uh, one source says this is Spanish-Italian, but everywhere else I look, this is a Spanish film. I've been unable to find why that is, like why Spain is also allowed to be considered giallo. But... Whatever the case, uh, I guess Spanish also is, so not sure why. But, and one reason why this title has always stuck out to me is because ones with numbers or have always been my favorite, next to animal titles, like, you know, the Red Queen, Kill Seven Times, Killer is One of Thirteen, uh, Nine Guests for a Crime, which I'll get to. Killer Reserve, Nine Seats, which I'll get to. Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Just, uh, I've always loved numbers and titles like that. And plus it kind of tells us what we're in for. Even though there's 13 murders <laughs> in this film. Uh, I think nine of them are committed by the murder. So, but... And even Jack the Ripper himself is confirmed six victims. Which, this is basically a modern telling of Jack the Ripper. Where, you know, also in London, where Jack the Ripper does exist. <laughs> like, they even talk about if he could still be alive. And the similarities between this case and the previous one. But I'll get into that. Now, it's directed by... Uh, uh, Jose L Luis Madrid who let's see what else he's directed uh, The Crimes of Petio which is another uh, Paul Nashi film yeah this is Paul Nashi which I think are his only ones I can't click on Death of a President, but that's another Paul Nashie film. Which I, I would like to get the Paul Nashie Blu-ray box sets, which this one has not been collected on, but it does have Blue Eyes of the Broken Doll and Dragonfly for each corpse. And it was written by him, Paul Nashie, Tito Carpi, and Sandro Continenza. And stars Paul Nashi, Patricia Lauren, Renzo Marignano, uh, Orchide de Santis, and Andre Racino. Not really anyone that I recognized other than Paul Nashi. And yeah, this says Italian in Spain but the language is Spanish. I got this on Trash Palace, came with English audio. Now, this, 
Which, one thing that is funny to note is a movie where prostitutes are being killed, even in the act of being in the hotel room with the killer, it, there's no nudity. This movie feels like it should be very, very sleazy and just, even you take the nudity and sexuality out of it, it just has that sleazy feel, just that low budget, sort of trash cinema type look and feel to it. Uh, it does feel incredibly low budget. I mean, there are scenes where we follow Paul Nashi and the camera's just kind of, like, almost feels like a handheld, like, kind of how shaky it is. But I did very much enjoy this film. It's a very straightforward uh, Jello. Does have a lot of slasher esque. Well, I can't even really say that. I mean, because there are a number of Jally that's plenty bloody. And I'd say this one has a lot of blood or gore, but has a high body count. And a lot of the deaths are just like up close stabbings where the skin looks something like latex. I mean, it reminded me of Hellraiser when we see the hooks go in. It sort of like that kind of leathery kind of texture to it with that bright, vibrant paint, you know, blood that I love the look of in, in these older films. And there's not really much of a Scotland Yard <laughs> investigation. I mean, there's the one commissioner, Campbell, I believe his name is, who really just, every so often, uh, uh, Inspector Campbell, he's sitting in this room, like this very fancy room, you know, with his leg crossed, just kind of talking about the case with his childhood friend, Winston, who's a school teacher, who's made to look very creepy <laughs> with his students. I think it's a boarding school, but his students are like young teenagers, and there's even a scene where he notices this one Carol Ann looking girl who she has a boyfriend from outside the school, a much older guy. And he like has her come to his office late at night and he kind of like gets close to her, kind of blackmails her, like saying, hey, don't, I don't want to tell your parents, so don't see him anymore. But yeah, and you can, you know, he kind of like holds her like, now go back to bed. She gets killed. But. And it does kind of. Do somewhat of a decent job. At thinking of. Making us think. Okay is it him. Is it even the inspector himself. Who really seems to be. Impressed by the murders. To, to some extent. But. The, the real story. That we follow. Along with the investigation, even though there really isn't one, is Paul Nash, he plays a guy named Pedro, who, I guess, with the, I mean, in the beginning of the film, we see him walk with a limp, and then in one of the first scenes, we see through flashback, which is lit with this nice sort of blue lighting, and I thought that looked cool, where he was like a, a circus acrobat, where I'm guessing he fell in the safety net. But then like the next shot, he's on the ground holding his knee. He hurt his leg. Which, yeah, it's one of those movies where like someone goes to get punched. It cuts here. Then the next shot is them already on the ground. And the, the fight scenes, because Paul Nashi gets like three big brawl scenes. Where all the punches are like very slow and exaggerated noises. I, I could see some people saying this like a so bad it's good movie uh, on like a technical level. And yeah, there are things that are very laughable. Also the acting and uh, uh, the dubbing, mostly pretty bad, but I, I still enjoyed it. There is one moment that comes along where I just say, okay, 
this movie really is not going for clever. And I just thought, okay, I've seen enough Jolly now. Where This is my 107th Jolly review. Where a character says something about himself. And I was like, killer. It, it's got to be, because that's going to be the explanation. And I was right. Also, I think at one point, because Winston is married to this woman named Sandra, who the inspector is also in love with. And I think she kind of confides in him about certain things. Winston kind of picks up on that. So you have this minor subplot of this love triangle. And the inspector is in love with her. But eventually she gets killed. But there's no body found. So Winston and Campbell are kind of treating it like she ran away. But... And the, but I think it's the second victim we see is Paul Nashi's wife, who in the circus flashback we see her there. But now she's a prostitute. She gets killed, and so from then on, they think Paul Nashi is uh, uh, the killer. And the one that's really pushing it is uh, Winston. Even at one point, he talks about, actually, well, he talks about how he did all this, uh, you know, background looking into uh, Pedro, Paul Nashi, and found all this stuff that kind of links with the killer, like, oh, he went to, to a medical school. They say to do autopsies. I guess they couldn't say mortician, but... Which obviously fits in with the line of work that Jack the Ripper does. Which they keep talking about the surgical precision. But when you see the stabbings and everything, it looks like a hack job. So I thought that was amusing. And it does show Jack the Ripper collecting body parts in like these giant jars. He, he does send letters to Campbell at one point at a couple points throughout the film which one of the plot devices is how th they get hundreds of letters like a month for people admitting to being Jack the Ripper probably for fame but he says there's this one letter that stood out to him because of how it's written and it ended up being the one from the killer himself but he sends a hat box with an eyeless corpse in it, uh, an eyeless head in it. And it's funny because none of the police react, really. They just kind of pass it around, like... Hmm. So, yeah, the acting's not very strong. But, you know, it, it has a kill every so often that helps keep it interesting. Paul Nashi even though there's not a whole lot for him to do other than kind of mug and fight. <laughs> like, there's not much to him as a character, I guess. He, he does have a good presence. Eventually, he does go up to this one prostitute who was friends with his wife and the first victim. And... He says, well, you must have seen some common men around both of them. Maybe you can help me find the killer so that, you know, I can clear my name. When she first goes up to her in her apartment, which this young girl runs in because her cat walked in, says, oh, my cat's hungry, but I have nothing to feed it. So he hides and she gives her a glass of milk. And I guess the cat's name is Pussy. But seeing this young five, six year old girl keep going, like, essentially saying, My pussy's hungry. <laughs> you know, like, it, it, it's my pussy's fault. Come on. Come on, pussy. It's kind of strange. Um, but yeah, she doesn't want to help him. She kicks him out. Oh, but the young girl, when she goes to get the cat, she sees his feet sticking out of the curtain he's hiding in. That ties in later because 
Actually, I'll save that. And then also, like, with the the, the schoolgirl that Winston was obviously flirting with, when she gets killed, her hu husband, her boyfriend was present. He gets arrested. He's found with his prints on the knife. He was found fleeing the school. But still, the, the inspector is still certain, like, oh... He still refers to the killer as someone being separate from the boyfriend. Like, he knows it wasn't him. And again, he kind of talks like, you know... Not with admiration, but kind of... I guess kind of admiration. Maybe that's kind of the... Twist, or the kind of direction it wants us to go in. It doesn't go very strong with its misdirects or its red herrings, really. But you you could kind of see where they would go with each person. Like with him, I was like, well, maybe it's because he's in love with Sandra. I even thought it might have been Sandra at some point. I'll explain that when I get into the spoilers. But, and then, the next time we see that prostitute, Pedro asks for help... She has these three guys in a bar jump him, which he kills two of them. <laughs> which they're standing there with their knives and they're just like, murderer, killer. <laughs> he fights all three and I think kills two of them. Which, of the 13 murders, uh, eight are female, five are male, all but one are stabbings. One was hit by a car. I don't even remember how. But, so yeah, a lot of stabbings in this movie. But then eventually, they meet up again and she's like, I have some information for you. And then they kind of work on a lead together. But that's pretty much right at the end of the movie. And yeah, a lot of the deaths are just kind of nobody prostitutes. We just see them in their room, kind of in their lingerie or whatever telling an unseen person like well are you coming or not and then we just see the knife come at him but a lot of them are like up close where we see the knife go in we see like the latex rip with blood come out one of them is really cheesy because we see like the skin texture like rip but it's like black underneath like it was all hollow that's one of the last victims. But yeah, I, I don't think there's much more to say because it is pretty straightforward. And yeah, it's not like it goes super far with really trying to play with red herrings or everything. It's just pretty much watch these people get killed. Watch the police think it's this guy and really try to finger this guy for it. Oh, but wait, we're going to tell you it's him at the last minute. It's not a very deep movie but I can say I enjoyed it 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 was fun it was entertaining it was one of those movies where even with how poorly a lot of it is made especially the acting especially with like the the fighting choreography where everything is like slow and you can tell they're not connecting it if it was anything else I would say this was a very bad poor movie but has an entertainment behind it that gives it charm. So yeah, I really liked it. Uh, I would, as far as the Spanish ones go, and again, I don't know why Spain gets the pass for being considered Jallo, but as far as the Spanish ones go, I would put it up there with Killers 1 of 13 as far as my favorite one. But yeah, with that, I'm going to get into spoilers, so... At one point, one of the victims is Sandra. And I thought it might have been her at one point because thinking, obviously there's something about Winston, like maybe she knows about his attraction to these young girls or whatever he has for them. Or maybe she is in love with Cam uh, Campbell but doesn't want to divorce Winston or 
whatever. But then she is one of the victims, but there's no body. So Winston and Campbell are talking about, like, well, why would she have left? You know, Campbell asks her, like, why do you think she left? Like, do you think she knows? That, or he says, she told me something about you sexually. Yeah, I thought it was going to be about the girls at the school. He flips out, gets angry, and says, yes, it's true. I'm impotent. And so then I thought, that right there. He's the murderer. It's because he's impotent. He has no sexual performance. He has no control over these women. And that's exactly what it is. He is the killer, and that is why. I mean, he seen enough Jolly now where if someone gives something like that away about themselves, that is going to make them the killer, and that's going to be the motive. Because uh, being impotent has been in a number of Jolly as the motivation for the killer. And that's what it was here. And I think Winston even knows that there's some sort of romantic tension between Campbell and Sandra. Because he asked her at one point, he's like, so what's the deal with Campbell? And she says, oh, he's just a friend. You know, I talk to sometimes. And he's like, oh, is that all? He also has it in his head that she is being unfaithful to him because of his, you know, shortcomings. But how Campbell finds this out is he says that Winston went to the apartment building where that prostitute lived, impersonating him. And the young girl that was there, I think, recognized him? Oh, no. He went there asking about Pedro. Or something. It, he he went there impersonating Campbell. And that incriminated him. So then he, he said he had to think about it. Who would impersonate me? Or who would be able to? And that was Winston. So towards the end we have this sort of long sequence. Where Nashi is following Campbell. Following up on this lead. You know, on the train all the way to this gothic mansion. Excuse me, where we've seen Jack the Ripper store his body part trophies a couple times throughout the film. And we see Campbell go inside and sees Winston. Finds out he's the Ripper. It is because, yeah, he's impotent. He has no control over these women except in death. And the infidelities of Sandra is what put him over the edge and go after her but then he informs him no she she wasn't unfaithful to you but he shoots Campbell because he knows a secret then Nashi shows up they get into a, a fight ending with Winston being stabbed and then in the car that's when Campbell tells the story of, well, I know he went and interviewed those people under the guise of being me. And then it ends with a really corny line where he's like, tells the driver, stop off at the nearest hospital. Oh, because he's shot. But he's just kind of like, well, yeah. and so then I thought. He's like, driver, stop off at the nearest hospital. I don't want to be Jack the Ripper's last victim. <laughs> and then you know, end credits. <laughs> That's how it ends. It does show Pedro being put in cuffs. I think I missed what they were going to do with him. I thought, uh, I was like, oh, did Campbell die? And now they're make, they're ending it with him being, uh, being the Ripper. But no, then it showed Campbell giving his explanation, so. But yeah, there really wasn't much to say about this film. Uh, as much as I liked it and as entertaining as it was, it really was just very straightforward. And, yeah, Campbell is pretty inept. 
up until that sequence where he actually follows up on the lead and finds Winston, we don't see him at any crime scenes or anything, talking about any evidence. He just kind of fills Winston in from time to time. That's what he does. He also talks to this, I don't know if it's his partner or some younger colleague about some ideas, which is the one he fills in at the end in the car. But yeah, this is what I've wanted to see since I first got into Jallo. This title has always stuck out to me. It, I do think Seven Murders for Scotland Yard is a better title than just, you know, Jack the Ripper of London. So, but yeah, fun movie. Uh, I, I can see why people might think it's so bad it's good or really just think it's a bad, poor movie. <clears throat> I think all of its flaws or weaknesses has a charm to it. And it is one of those, it, it is nice once in a while to have a giallo that is very straightforward. You know, just kind of turn your brain off. Not one that is convoluted at all. Have too many twists and turns or like a deep plot. Just, you know, purely entertainment. But, yeah. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, actually, even for a movie that I wanted to see for years. So, Seven Murders for Scotland Yard. I have, uh, so it is only nine from Trash Palace. The tenth one never got ordered for whatever reason, so, so that was my fault. So that was number four, so there's five left. And I did pick up today the first uh, Jala homage or tribute film by Helena Cotet and Bruno Forzani, who did Strange Color of Your Body's Tears, Amer or Amer. So I'll be checking that out. Also with their five short films that kind of led to this. So I'll be doing that. And one thing that's a little different, I don't think I could show the slip cover, but Going back to Italian cannibal movies with Massacre in Dinosaur Valley from Severin, which I've heard of this and I finally picked it up today. So excited to check that out. I, I wanted to get more Italian cannibal films and still waiting on a muck to come in. So still got plenty more to do, but that is Seven Murders for Scotland Yard. Stay tuned for those, and uh, thank you for watching.